Hey, good morning. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, we don't have power either. <laughs> yeah, our first power outage of the year and it's an, it's early summer, figure that one out. I'm guessing somebody was partying a little too hard and well, time to light a candle and start welding. <laughs> When you know it guys, first power outage of the year and it's on the day that we hope to start welding this man basket. Hopefully, by the time I get back from doing some errands, the power will be back on. But I do have to say that I don't think we'd be doing this if we were off grid. Although, we could use the generator, but man that would be loud and obnoxious. will fit your bobcat. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to use that plywood platform that we were using all last summer. <laughs> that plywood platform has sentimental value. It does. <laughs> You're going to keep it and use it just because you've been using it? Yeah. I like it. This has to work, Justin. Like, I can't be in the man basket and like wondering if the welds are good or not because that's where I'm at right now. So, so maybe if you want to take a moment and kind of pick apart what my welds already are and tell me where you think I screwed up and maybe kind of give me pointers on what to do differently. So the goal is to get all the welding done today. I've got all the railing over here and we're going to use Justin's shop and the concrete floor to, to lay all the stuff out and uh, get everything put together. So this one, I had the feed rate at one and the heat at, at D. I feel like it actually did penetrate a little bit, but there's not enough weld there. It's like too skinny. And then I tried cranking up the feed rate and I succeeded. Like that's a big weld, but I again feel like maybe I'm not getting any penetration. It feels like that weld's just on the surface. And then I turned it down to four and I feel like maybe I went a little too slow on one side as far as like too much weld, but then I maybe got a little better penetration. Well, I think it, the wire speed was too fast. You, you want it to flow, you want it to bite in so you okay. can, you, at the top and the bottom. Yeah. So, you know, you really didn't, you got a little bit of penetration there, but nothing on the bottom all the way down. Yeah. And even the top is not bit in, you know, I mean, yep. it's, it's just kind of maybe the surface of it. Went okay. In, but you just, I think if you slow down and take your time and it'll be better. I was trying to do something that uh, was recommended to me, which was aim the heat at the radius because there's more metal at the radius, but I'm not really sure. It seems like you just need more heat. Like yeah. period, it's just got to get hot enough to get into that metal. That's a small welder. This is definitely at the top end of it. It's just fiddling with it and figuring out the settings and stuff. Okay, well, and that's kind of what I was thinking. I could keep farting with this at home yeah. and get like a whole bunch of these types of welds, all different shapes and colors yeah. and get nowhere. So right. I'm hoping that today you can kind of walk me through and, and show me like what we're trying to get to. It's not yeah. the setting so much, but it's like, what does a good weld look like? We need to grind all this off, you know, so yeah. we can get down to raw metal. So we get to use my grinder again today. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I got to spend a little quality time with my grinder yesterday. So. <laughs> okay, and I was thinking later, maybe lift it with the bobcat and then we could weld underneath on that side, if that yep. makes sense. Actually, the better thing to do is just to flip it over because flip welding it. upside down is not very fun. See, guys, this is, this is the little things. In fact, I texted my brother and he goes, is it hard welding uphill? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he goes, well, it looks to me like you're welding uphill. And I was like, is that a problem? <laughs> like, apparently it is. Guys, there's so much to learn. <laughs> School of hard knocks. All right, so I'll get my trusty grinder out and we'll get those. Uh, this one's probably not bad. We can, we could, we can just clean that one up okay. with the grinder. Just kind of skim over it. Okay. And there's plenty of radius there, so we'll, we'll, okay. we'll use that. So I'll just knock these two down. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs>
Uh oh, it's done. Justin says a little bit more. I feel like if you haven't had to grind a weld, you haven't welded. <laughs> Saw this on your helmet. Touche. So Justin has proved that you can weld this metal with that welder. So it is me, which we kind of already knew. Anyway, now that we've established that, Justin thinks that he can coach me. We'll see. So a couple things I noticed when Justin was welding is that the tip of the welder was much closer to the weld and it explains a problem that I was having. I was holding the tip probably, I don't know, three quarters of an inch to an inch away. And what happens is the arc jumps around. It's very hard to control the arc. It's like bouncing all over. And that's kind of why I was ending up with this real spotty, blotchy looking weld. And then we've actually changed the settings on the welder. We turned the wire feed down and we turned the heat all the way up. And I can see that there was some issues with my technique. Make loops in the beginning to get that puddle going. Okay. Kind of stay in one spot. Okay. And then when you go, you can just go up and down okay. and make C's. And when, when you do that, you'll just drag that puddle. Okay. You... Hold on. So you're not letting it, you're letting it burn into up here, but you're not letting it burn into down there. You see how uh, you're just sitting there? Yep. So go up here, then go down here. And when you see the molten uh, metal kind of go like that, then you know you're burnt in. And then go okay. up to the top, and when you see it kind of suck in, Okay. And then same thing with the bottom. Stay there until it sucks down and then it sucks up, so. Ah, okay. Oop, pop the breaker. You heard that pop? Yeah, what was that? You popped your weld out here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I'm glad it went pop when it was on the ground with nobody in it. Yeah, so it should just keep doing that. If you want to finish that one or you could use the yeah. big one and let's use the big one. I mean, the big one, it's made for this. Not diggity, it actually does look like a weld. I mean, let's just compare that to that. <laughs> like you're not fighting the welder at all. It's just like, yeah, no problem, what you got? And it's like a much cleaner weld. Oh wait, that's just you. And the shield, this is a gas shielded welder, right? Right. So this one's a flux core, so that's why it splatters so much. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. That's so different. Yeah. I guess I feel like that's maybe not a perfect weld. I probably could have gone a little higher on the radius here mm -hmm. and filled a little bit more, but I mean, that's probably a thousand times stronger than what I had before. Well, plus we're gonna be welding on Three, All three sides. sides, yeah. So no one weld's doing much work. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, two more to go? Two more yeah. to go here. Yeah. Two more to go. And then... Um, we'll tack this down around it and weld the inside of this. Okay. And then, uh, and then we'll flip it. Okay. That sounds good. You weren't going all the way down. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is going a lot better. Uh, I feel like the welder makes a lot of sense and then kind of having your guidance. Um, right now we're gonna weld these corners. So Justin's gonna kind of show me how to do a back weld to fill that corner from my fantastically beautiful chop saw work and then how to fill these uh, the corners on the outside and make all that stuff nice and tidy. Can you let it cool?
You saw how fast I had to go to keep it from melting. Well, I can it. see it's flowing down. Yeah. You can touch that with a grinder, obviously, but yeah. I see what you mean. Like that weld just wants to. So if you want to go on the inside of this one and okay. kind of do the same thing as what I did, and then okay. uh, the outside of this one will clean up really good. Okay. Stop as much as you need to stop. You know? Yeah, I kind of let that one get away from me. Don't go so wide either. Okay. Try to keep it away from me. So I feel like it's making a lot of sense. Like having you kind of hold my hand a little bit and explain to me, you know, what you're looking for. It's not the settings of the welder. It's not. Uh, you know what heat setting or whatever it's more just like this is what you're looking for in the weld and Most of the time I've been too high or too low or too slow or too fast stuff like that So otherwise I feel like at this point It's kind of just putting some time and some welds down right and just kind of keep working on that technique and keep trying to get that puddle and Justin's telling me that welding vertically usually is a lot easier than welding horizontally So we're gonna do a little bit of that. So I think put the camera down and make welds School of Hard Knocks is working, guys. The welds on the platform feel, I can't even tell you, 10,000 times better than that garbage that I was doing before. And I feel like having the instruction has been great. Uh, the last few welds seem like they just went f flying right by. But I am learning that welding vertically is pretty sweet because gravity is pretty magical. So we've decided we're, we're good with the platform. It's pretty much done. A little bit of grinding to touch up the corners and a couple of the welds and paint and that one's done. So what we're going to do is move on to getting the railing put together. I cut all the railing yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, give it a watch. I did a couple things that were, I'll call them aggressive <laughs> because I used the software that, uh, let me see if I even have this here. I used a software to design this man basket and um, the goal was to basically save myself a bunch of headaches. So I actually designed this entire thing in SketchUp and I used SketchUp to create a cut sheet for all this railing. And I did a super aggressive thing. I just took my measurements, I sorted out my material and I started cutting. And today, today we'll find out whether that was a really good move or not. <laughs> it may be really stupid. So we're gonna see if all that bravery or stupidity works out in our favor. We're gonna lay the railing out once it's all welded up or tack welded up, then we're gonna to try to fit it to the platform and then uh, align that with the stake pockets kind of as a way of making sure they fit. Instead of using a tape measure, we're gonna kind of use the, the fudget rule. <laughs> So you're thinking, probably weld this center rail. Yeah. Then square up and weld these mid rails, and then we can just weld the end rails or, or something like that, maybe. We'll tack it all. Okay, maybe tack it all. Okay. Like that there. Maybe back. Oh, back. Right I there. see. There you are. Okay. Yeah, I kind of run on the. I see. Edge yep. Of that on the scene. radius. Yeah. We'll tack that, and then. Okay. Um, then we can square this and tack these. Do you have a measurement from the top of this down? I don't. I'll grab that real quick. Okay. And actually, we need to move this over just a hair, it looks like, because that's not quite in the okay. middle. That looks about right. Inch and eighth. Perfect. Inch and an eighth and inch and an eighth. So you would say don't rely on these for square? I normally don't. I double check them right there. That's perfect. I need to come down on this yep. one. 
come down, down, down there. We'll put a couple on here, good. Okay. All right. Do you think those little tacks are strong enough that we can kind of, you know, move this around and, and be... The problem I mean, is it's going to... Uh, want to bend to one side. Yeah. It, it won't bend that way, but if we lift it up on the bolt ends, yep. it'll fold. Okay. Yep. You can even move a little faster than that if okay. you want to. Ten feet on the dot. So that basket's ten feet long. And this is 119 and a quarter. We're basically going to be 3 eighths of an inch in from either end. Let's put it on there. We'll find out. Well, this is this was a, the challenge I gave myself yesterday in yesterday's video was does doing a cut sheet bite in the butt or does it work out? And that's part of what I'm proving or disproving today is whether a cut sheet's a good idea. Oh, okay. Or does the guy who basically fits it all up and it all works and he has no clue what measurements or what, but it all fits, like yes. which, which guy do you want to be? Justin's thinking at this point we should call the engineer, but we don't have cell phone service, so it's settled. Can't carry the over there. Okay. My end's only really hot. Is yours really, really hot? No. <laughs> My guess is that's about three eighths of an inch. Yup. Oh man, that drawing might actually be right. Gonna give you a nice spot to weld over there. Ah, the yep, side. you're right. So you engineered it this way, right? Yeah, the engineer knew. He really understood welding on a level I didn't. Did you want it this short? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not a small person basket, Justin. This is a grown person basket. Yeah, it's supposed to be three feet. You know why? Because the OSHA, can we kind of test it if it like goes in and out easily? Sure, I'll grab it here, you grab it there. Okay. I can settle with that. About like that. Uh oh. Okay. It looks like there's just a, a wee tiny space in here for uh, the railing. If we go, yeah, that's, that's beautiful right there. Pretty, got a little gap on both sides. So yeah, why don't you put in a couple of tacks? One on each yeah. side or something? Okay. I put one on each top and one on the bottom. So that way the bottom doesn't kick out on us. Okay, let's try this now. I got mine started over there. So I feel like you can pull this, you know? Yeah. But it's got a little spring to it. But it's not bad. Okay. I mean, you could deal with it. It's not just gonna go straight in. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna end up being a two-man deal or what, but yeah, I think I'm good with that. Okay. See, this is second to last rail. The last rail is pretty tiny, so we'll call this last rail. So two feet five inches times three, so seven feet seven. And this top rail is seven feet seven and five eighths. So we need to be about 
Oh, so five eighths, so I need to actually be a little over a quarter. So we'll go for that quarter again. Okay. Quarter worked pretty good on the other one. Why do you have four on this one instead of three? Because it's the back rail and where the forks from the, uh, what's it called, the carriage come in, I kind of wanted rails there just so you don't like have something sticking out and like somebody gets smashed by the rail or something stupid, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I kind of laid it out to where these are actually right over the rails or right over where the carriage would come in. Um, that's what I was thinking. It wasn't for strength or anything, but this is the back rail and I figure people are gonna be leaning on it a lot. You know, it's gonna get a lot more use. Yeah. The other one's probably less, I think. Okay. So it's more welding, but I think it'll be stronger. You know what, I have a hunch we may end up putting a center on some of this stuff. I'm just, I don't know how strong that one by one is. Once you get to jumping up and down on it. I mean, you're not supposed to stand on the rail of a man basket, but I'm just more concerned about it bending. But what we're not doing today is I'd like to gusset all that, you know, put corner gussets in. I think at that point, I don't think you're gonna bend it. You're not gonna bend it. Okay, Justin says, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know metal. If you're, if you're worried about it at all, uh, doing that little piece going across and then drilling a hole and going down, you know, like sticking a bolt in there or something. Yeah, that'll help. Th that'll, well, that'll tie everything together. Yeah. But you're not gonna. Okay. You're not gonna. <laughs> maybe I think I'm stronger, or maybe I think I weigh more than I really weigh. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm gonna grab that square. Right about a quarter there. Pretty, Pretty good. good there. That's great right there. That's pretty great, pretty great. Right on. Beautiful. Right on. Guys, look at that. Tell me that's not looking like a man basket. The rails are complete. We made an executive decision while we were working on this to actually just skip this mini rail that I had here. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, we're not gonna be building the gate. Uh, it's just not necessary. We're thinking to put a chain from here to there and be happy with it. We did a little tuning on this back rail with some bending and some stuff to get them to fit the pockets better. But all of these rails are removable. And so now we're gonna do just some of the little tidy up work. We're gonna put little caps, not complete caps, but something to keep the rail from falling down in those pockets. That way um, we only need maybe one or two pins per rail instead of having to pin every single pocket, which would be super annoying. I had a lot of little, little pieces in this design that I, I didn't know if they would be necessary or not. I was gonna put tabs to connect the rails to each other. I was also going to gusset uh, quite a bit on the railings to add strength. And it looks like now that the rails are plenty strong. There's no need to gusset. Uh, we might still put some tabs and things on to kind of help, you know, make the rails a little bit stronger or make them kind of work more as one rail. But um, as we kind of go through this project, we continue to remove things that just aren't necessary, kind of over designed. How many of these do we need? Uh, 13. Okay. Do you want to cut them? I'll weld them? Yeah, I'll just keep cutting. You just keep okay. welding. Sounds good. Well, it happened guys. 
we officially have a man basket. We did some kind of like little touches on here. We welded these little tabs on the bottom so that the rails won't drop all the way down in the pocket. And so now we just need to put a pin or something kind of here and there to keep the rails from popping up. But now if we decide to stand on the rails or anything, those are not gonna dive down and we don't have to put pins in everything. Let me show you one other thing we did to this guy. We put a couple tabs here in the corners and I've got to drill these out to put a pin in, but these corners will actually attach just like that so that this basket will actually act more like a single unit. We did the same thing with that back rail. We just found a small piece of angle, threw that on there. So that's gonna really make this railing more sturdy. It seemed like we relied a lot on the railing last year because we couldn't get the telehandler super close to the house. It's been a long day, guys. It's been a long three days. I said it in, I think, yesterday's video or uh, another video, just how much work this stuff is. I really, I, I hand it to you guys that do this for a living every day, pushing metal and cutting and welding. It's hot, it's heavy, it's a lot of work. We're used to hard work, but this is definitely up there. Um, super appreciative to have friends who do this and who are willing to share their knowledge. I feel like that's something that isn't commonplace. It seems like even though we have YouTube and other places where you can learn things, finding people who are willing to take time out of their day and kind of hold your hand on a project, that's just so rare. And of course, Alyssa and I are very thankful for the people who do that for us. We still have a few housekeeping items to do on the man basket. We've got some drilling to do, um, put some pegs in. We obviously need to get the deck uh, built. And then there's kind of a, an idea I have for securing that deck down and making it easy to replace whenever that happens. And of course, we've got to grind a little bit. There's a couple of welds that are that are really bad. I mean, not really bad, There's just they're just stuff that needs to be ground off. And then of course, probably the hardest decision of all is what color to paint this animal. I'm sure there are lots of you folks out there who this type of a project's just kind of a weekend deal. But for me to conceptualize this and take the time to learn how to draw it or render it out in a software, and then to actually realize the project right here, back of our truck, gonna be helping us work on the house. It's, it's really satisfying. And I think it's, it's already kind of common knowledge out there, but, but don't be afraid to try. You know, even SketchUp, I, I, I really hesitated to even draw this out. I thought, eh, it might be a waste of time. I might be better off just spending my time building. And I'm glad I did, because I think this is gonna actually pay off in dividends later in the project. There's so many other things we have left to build around this place, not just at the house, but someday down the road, we'd love to have a shop and yada, yada, yada. And I'd like to conceptualize a lot of that stuff. It helps Alyssa and I kind of talk about it and kind of create ideas, and then we can kind of work through some of the building problems that it presents. And so I feel like taking the time to, to get to know the software, spend the time planning, that's kind of where we're at with the house. We've taken a huge step back and we're spending more time just crunching numbers, laying things out, moving things here and there we feel like it's gonna help us with the next phases of the build. That way we're not spending a lot of time backtracking. The, the answer to the question is, does the cut sheet work? The answer is yes. We welded this up exactly the way it was laid out in the software, and I cut it exactly the way it was laid out in the software, and we had zero fitment issues. I feel like that's where you reap the benefits of blueprints and having a set of plans to work from. I think it's a good skill to have the ability to do both. That cabin, there's no set of plans for that cabin because the materials were very uh, constraining. It was like reclaimed materials. And so you work with what you have. This man basket, on the other hand, I, I drew up a set of plans and we worked from that. And so I think those two skills are very uh, different. And having them both is, is a fantastic skill set. It's really like the difference between the timber frame that we built here and that cabin. One, we were super frustrated because we couldn't find a tree big enough to make the beam that we had drawn. And it turns out that trees just don't grow that big, which is a material limitation. So these are just great skills to have. So I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I took this project on. I am absolutely filthy. It feels right. I love it. Like, I got a sunburn from a welder. 
I don't know if you guys knew that was even possible. I asked Justin, can you get a sunburn from welding? He goes, oh yeah, and I'm like, that explains that. <sighs> so glad to be done. I hear a rumor that Alyssa has fresh salad ready for dinner that came from the garden that's gonna taste especially good with this project.